be so prepared. Ellie, I believe we are live as we speak, you know, and that goes, that's how it goes on live television. You know, Scotty Mack has given us the orders behind the scenes. So first and foremost, welcome everybody to be on the court. Uh, I'm Sudsy. That's John Ellis, Ellie style right there. Scotty Mack in the background. Thank you for joining us on Sunday nights. We love having you. We love being with you. Talk about racquetball. You know, before we get to our guest tonight, we have a legend that we're going to have, Rhonda Rasich. And uh, she's a close personal friend of ours. We've known her for many, many years, and it's going to be really, really cool to be able to talk to her because we stay in touch, you know, through these months of what's going on. But, you know, we're going to really get into it with Rhonda and find out what's going on. But before we get to that, you know, I always like to say a few words. And I just wanted to say how great it is to see some of the things that are happening right now in Rackable in the world. You know, we just had the IRT in Atlanta this weekend. We have the war tournament, the outdoor tournament in Vegas coming up in October. And what amazing news and great news it is for all of racquetball that Kane has decided to play and he will be competing in Vegas. That's great news for racquetball. I love it. Uh, thank you, Kane. And thank you for whoever made that happen, because I know there's a lot of people behind the scenes that made that happen as well. The LPRT, you know, Kansas City, the events happening in December, the Randy Root, the Team Root event, you know, TJ, LPRT, good job. We're getting back out there, you know, and that's what we all want. We want some normalcy and it's happening. You know, it's been about six, seven months. And no matter how all of this ends, we have to stay realistic. There's going to be some changes. There's going to be some big changes. There'll be changes that you and I don't like, that the sport doesn't like, that family members don't like. Maybe you've already went through some of these, you know, changes, whether they've been hard, difficult, they're just different. And it's a matter of how you approach them and how you handle them. You know, but one thing that will never, ever change is all the passion and the love that we all share for our great sport, you know, and that's never going to go away. That's what Ellie and I and Scotty Mack try to bring you nonstop every Sunday. And, you know, as I bring in our guest here, there is no doubt that, you know, this amazing individual also shares that same passion. So Scotty Mack, bring in Rhonda Rasich. You know, this is, a, this is a fun night, special night to have Rhonda here finally. Rhonda, I mean, so happy to see you. And I could tell you that, you know, just seeing the shirt beast, I mean, yeah, that pretty much sums you up, you know? So <laughs> first, first off, Rhonda, thank you. Thank you for being here, really. Thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. Love what you're doing with this, by the way. Well, it's, it's all pleasure. And, and I know you share the same passion and love that Ellie and I have and Scotty Mack. And, you know, we had to bring you on. And now is just a good time because there's a lot of good things happening. You know, finally, we're getting back to a little bit of normalcy here for us. You know, but everybody wants to know, and I certainly want to know too. Rhonda, what have you been doing for the past six or seven months? Have you played any racquetball and what's been going on? Has it only been six or seven months? It feels like six or seven years. Um, no, I haven't been playing a lot of racquetball because they shut down all the courts. And at one point they even uh, shut down all of the outdoor courts that we had at the, uh, at the parks. Um, I think some of those have opened up back now. Uh, I actually heard that uh, LA Fitness, um, ironically, I called them and I asked them, hey, are your racquetball courts open? And they said, no. And then two members that I know there said, we've just walked in and played and they haven't said anything to us. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna walk in and do the same thing. Uh, I haven't, haven't had the chance to do that yet. Uh, for the summer, I have 
completely redefined my living room into a workout room. Um, just trying to get cre as creative as I can with, with whatever I have or whatever I can get my hands on. Um, I live on the seventh floor of a complex so that I got a lot of stairs I can work with, which is good. And, uh, you know, just, just trying to keep moving. Um, I actually did get to go to Sedona quite a bit and do a lot of hiking over the summer. Uh, I was going to Sedona there for a couple of months almost every week and getting in several hikes on several different trails. So, um, I mean, that was, that was really good. That was, uh, you know, something different, something refreshing. And of course you can't beat the scenery. I and mean, that's one of the most beautiful places in the world. So, um, yeah, just, just staying, you know, keeping my body going. And, and the thing that, I mean, I'm, my, my heart really breaks for the, for the status of the world right now. I mean, these are troubling times, no matter who you are, what you believe in, where you live, or what you have or don't have. I mean, everyone's going through it in some way or another right now. And that's, you know, that, that's, that's very sad. But uh, I, I've been trying to find a silver lining. And, you know, a couple of the ones that I found is um, it's given me some much needed time to uh, rehab some injuries, which is definitely coming along. And the other thing that, that I've really enjoyed is that this is, the first, this is literally the first off season I've ever had in my life my entire life since like high school i've never had more than like two weeks in between when i have to be somewhere to go compete whether it was racquetball or basketball or both so i i'm actually loving the opportunity that i've had to to work out really really hard like it doesn't matter how sore i get because i have time to recover it doesn't matter how heavy i lift because i can it's not like i oh i just got home sunday night and i have to hurry up and recover monday then Main, maintenance train on Tuesday and then pack Wednesday and leave Thursday and I can't get too sore because I got to play again this weekend so it's that's actually been really really nice it's been nice to be able to do things with my training that I've never been able to do uh, on this scale because of the time that I've had to do it and I'm I'm super excited about that I'm, I'm really loving that silver lining about it you spoken yeah. like a true veteran though and champion there Rhonda because you know we speak to a lot of the kids and they don't understand. They think like they have to be on the court 24 hours a day, you know, and that's just not necessary. And one of the things I'd love to hear from you too, before Ellie, I know Ellie's got just a list of questions for you. So you, you better be ready. And for everybody watching, you know, share this feed, get it out there. Let's keep racquetball moving, keep it hot. You know, I see a bunch of people watching, just share it, just get it out there. The more people that see it, the better. Well, Rhonda, what is that? Is that, is that water? Cheers to your water. water. Cheers. Ellie's got a white claw, and I know Scotty Mac has a glass of wine back there. Cheers. My mom's water. <laughs> so you're not so so you're not playing, but you know, how do you how do you train? And people ask all the time, right? Like, how do you train or practice for racquetball if you can't get in the court? Uh well, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the I'm gonna give you the, the secret sauce, and this has nothing to do with corona. This has to do with when I was recovering from facial reconstructive surgery. And uh when my body was physically unable to even carry myself from one room to the other without a walker, uh, what, what I relied on then was visualization. And that, that really is a lot of it. And I mean, the, the body will always follow the mind. So, you know, as much practice as, as you can do, as much, I mean, as many drills as I did sitting on that couch in my head, uh, believe it or not, it made a bigger difference than anything I, I could have even tried to do physically at that point. Now, that's not to say I haven't done anything at all. I've actually, um, as far as I know, they haven't told me how many noise complaints I've gotten, but I've gone up to the top floor of the parking garage where I live and I've been just blasting the ball against the wall where the parking garage ends. You know, it, it spirals up seven or eight floors and where the spirals stop, there's a wall right in front of the elevator and I've just been doing dropping hits there. I mean, I can't work on any real shots, but at least I've been able to, you know, keep some of the rest off by being able to- You got all the shots. Swing. You got all <laughs> yeah. the shots. No worries. Yeah. Thanks. yeah, Rhonda, you know, I know, I, you know, you've had such a long career now uh, being the veteran that you are and, you know, Sudsy and I remember you. I, for me, it's when national doubles was happening there in Arizona and I was watching you shoot hoops, just going, this is crazy. This girl's on fire right now. <laughs> and then finding out that you're a great racquetball player too and going to be one of the best junior players. So that was a really cool moment since then. We've known each other, you know, and, and, um, you know, my question is, you know, what, anything you can tell us about the injuries over the years, because so many people are interested in what the life of a professional is. And, you know, we don't talk about our injuries out in front and you, you play with a lot of bruises, little bangs and bruises, but then some real injuries that you try to play through as well. So, you know, maybe you could talk a little bit about the rehab that you've been talking about during COVID here and some of the things that you could share with us over the years. 
Well, Sudzi, I think you said it best uh, at Worlds. Um, we had a little conversation, and, and I'm going to steal your quote here. Suds, you said 100% of the time you're never 100%. And, and yeah, looking back on my entire life playing, you know, a minimum of two sports, at, you know, at a time since I was about two. Uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much true. I mean, th this finger will never, never look any, any better than that. You guys all know, you know, you guys yeah. all got the same finger. Yep. Um, <laughs> I, I lost count of broken ribs, um, broke my elbow, my right elbow. Actually, my right elbow was broken the first year that I finished number one in the world. Um, whenever that was, I, I had gotten it broken at uh, Pan Am's in Dominican, maybe? No, 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 no. That was my left arm. See, I can't even keep up with the injuries. But I mean, uh, in, in a nutshell, there's there, the. I guess the trick to it is is knowing the difference between, you know, what you're capable of and what you're not, and how far you can push it before you're making it worse. Um, in the last three years, the my right knee, I tore my um, meniscus and MCL in Costa Rica at the Pan Ams. And I can, I just continued to play on it for about a year. So it was doing okay about 10 months later. And then I re-injured it pretty badly. And it took another nine, 10, 11 months to, for the right one to get okay. And then before the right one became hundred percent, which it's still not, um, I did the left one actually two torn meniscus and torn MCL even worse. And the left one to this day still gives me a lot more issues than the right. But I mean, I feel them both, but, but the difference is, um, like I said, during, during this, this COVID break, I've been able to, to knee in a different way than I could before. I've been able to push the envelope with, with how I can train the muscles that were neglected during, you know, the height of those injuries that were, were like, I had to lay off. Um, so, so all of that is coming around really, really nicely. Now it's a matter of putting those, you know, nearly healed joints back into the the production on the court because you know the one thing that i noticed during covid is is with everything i've i've done and tried to do to maintain you know court readiness racquetball is is something that can't be re like a full rally can't can't be replicated any other way the way that you move is is instinctively reactive at this point for me i mean i i've rehearsed it for so many millions of hours over the course of my career that i don't know how to do it any different and I, and nothing, nothing I can, I can, no situation I can put myself into as an individual without being on a court with or without an opponent. I can't replicate certain angles. I can't rec replicate, you know, the speed of the ball that I'm trying to go retrieve. I can't replicate a serve return. Um, those yeah, are the type so, of things. Rhonda, that, that's so true. You know, like people, you know, talking about when we were playing at the worlds and everything, I felt physically phenomenal or, or playing in, you know, national doubles or this or that. There's nothing like actually competing and getting your body ready, whether it's the mental focus, it's the physical focus, it's that, you know, sense of purpose and urgency on your muscles and the lactic acid, they just burn different, you know, and you could train your ass off all day, every day, but it's just not the same as playing. But, you know, it sounds like, you know, when you speak and, and yeah, probably Ellie and myself also, and, and I've heard Jason say this all the time, you know, you just learn how to play injured or you learn how to play with, with different injuries. And quite frankly, I think it makes, it has made me better in time and I see you do it, you know, and Veronica always says, I, I could say to her, oh, well, Rhonda has this, her or that. And she's like, yeah, but I still think she's gonna win. It's un it's unbelievable. Like she's, she, she'll never bet against you, you know, and, and I think- Tell her thank you for me. Oh, she, yeah, I will. <laughs> she, I think she's watching downstairs. So, but it's definitely something that I've seen you do and not a lot of players do that well, you know, knowing the difference between, you know, being sore, being injured or being hurt. and. I think that you've mastered that. Like you just know your body. And, and I always tell people that, that, and Ellie's got a bunch of injuries too. I'm like, listen to your body and then go from there. So, yeah. so the one, the other, other, one thing ahead. I will say real, real quick on that though, too, is, you know, it's, yes, I, I have made an art form out of that. I think, I think you have too. I mean, a, a lot of us who have been doing this at the highest level for this long have made it, made an art form out of that. But um, it, you know, as I've, as I have revisited all these, you know, doctors over the past year or so that, you know, trying to get, get everything, you know, ship shape. Um, they've actually told me that, that, that has, that has uh, kind of become a double edged sword because my body has become so uh, adept at compensating that I have created imbalances now where I, you know, now this, this works now, but I, I got so used to not using this 
I need to, I need to make this fire off again. I, like I got to wake this muscle group up. I got to wake this, this chain reaction of how the body is supposed to respond in this situation to, you know, for these muscles to fire in the right order, because they've been compensating for so long that they, they went to sleep and now, you know, it's creating other imbalances. So while it is true that you got to know your body, you got to know when you're, when you're, you're at that point of overcompensation too. I think that that's been kind of a big light bulb for me, uh, realizing what I've been compensating with and for how long, cause it's just become second nature. Like I don't have to think about how to move that way anymore. I just do it because I'm protecting this or that. And that, that, that now that things are working again, those compensations are not, not going to serve me. Now I need to get back to, all right, let's use everything that does work and, and make it work in the right order. Yeah, that's exciting. And by the way, 2006 was that broken elbow first number one in the world ranking there. Um, so you were wondering what year that was. That was the year, according to Thank Wikipedia. You. Thank yeah, you for no looking problem. that up. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, You're welcome. It, was, it was my right elbow. And I actually broke that against uh, Jose from Canada in, uh, I believe it was a semi, a, a quarter or a semi. You, you, the, you right broke your tournament. elbow on the court? Yeah. What is wrong with you? I don't even think, well, I, don't, I haven't, Ellie, what's your worst injury on the court? On uh, court. Hold on. I, I didn't know it was broken at the time. You know. I didn't get the x-ray until I got home. So yeah, on the court, you know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Separated <laughs> shoulder. I separated <laughs> I mean, my shoulder. I think I tore my labrum in a, on the court, but you know, I think, you know, for a lot of us who've had shoulder issues and whether you fix a labrum cartilage or the rotator there, or you never fix it and you just kind of deal with it over the years. Uh, I'd say a lot of high level, big swinging, hard hitting racquetball players over the years have torn their labrum a little bit under there. And so that's my worst. But if you've watched, you know, for those of that that have watched Ron over the years, whether it's on television or, you know, had the opportunity to see her in person, you understand. I mean, Rhonda's giving up her body and sacrificing it. And, and the dives aren't just dives that are like soft because she extends herself to the get that's, you know, really unbelievable at times while swinging. So the elbow's unprotected sometimes on that situation. And so, uh, you know, we've all seen the situation where big, huge bursar sacks blow up on you there to protect that actual bone underneath. And we've probably all had them. And it's a, it's a lot of fun, you know, to, to exp go through that experience because you know you're laying yourself on the line. But, you know, Rhonda, I'm, I'm curious because this COVID hit around uh, the end of February, early March there. And, you know, the tour was happening there for the ladies. And I'm, I'm curious where you felt like your game was at at that time. Obviously, you feel different now physically and mentally with this long break. But where were you before the break happened? Uh, trending in the right direction. Um, again, even though I was playing on, on, you know, some, some torn stuff in my knees, um, I, I, I was noticing torn things, you know, torn, you know, stuff down there that you needed Items. Supposed, to, supposed to make that work. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I really began to pay attention to, I mean, just the simplest patterns, like how I was walking or how I would sit down or stand up. Um, I mean, I, I realized compensations I was making. I realized imbalances that I had created. I realized how much I had been neglecting some of the proprioceptive uh, muscles and, and areas in, in, in those joints, at, you know, unconsciously for protection and realizing that I needed to get those things going. I also realized, you know, just in noticing those things and being aware of how am I walking? How am I sitting? How am I laying down? How am I using my right foot, you know, and not my left when I drive, you know, just, just watching how I position my body, you know, unconsciously throughout the day and noticing certain, um, you know, certain, certain things alignment wise that I could try to self-correct L noticing muscles that were sore when I didn't use them. So, okay, well, if this is, if this is tight, this is working overtime, which means this is not working at all type of stuff. So um, I, I felt like I was, I, by that awareness, I was trending in the right direction with the things that I was doing to uh, try to rebalance and realign and, and reawaken uh, you know, those, those movement patterns. And um, it was making a big difference kind of in le leaps and bounds. Like I was, I was feeling better by, by the week, if not the day. And, and that, that was where I kind of left off when we, when we had that, the, our, the last time I was actually on a court for a tournament was March 8th at the Boston pro stop. And that was, uh, you know, like I said, I've, I've, I felt good. That was the best I had felt in a long time. That was the least compensatory I had felt during a match uh, in a long time. So I knew that I was trending in the right direction. I just, and had a time to put it together before the next stop. So, I mean, well, at least you were trending in the right direction because not many other things in the world were at that time. Go ahead, Ellie. What do you got? Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, does for a, a, does age matter in this situation for you? Because you're a veteran now. I, I don't know how old you are and I'm not going to ask you, but I know it's up there a little bit in terms of professional racquetball years. So does age matter for you? It doesn't matter for Sudsy clearly with those 
uh, no. expressions he's making. But does age matter? And what are the goals now <laughs> as you get back out. to yeah, time out. as you get back to professional play, L- LPRT play? What are what are your goals as a professional player for yourself? Uh, I, I mean, I, my my goals are, are haven't changed. My my goal is to win every match that I step on the court for. I mean, I I I, I know the work that that I've put in. I know the work that I that I will continue to put in, and I know I believe what what I'm capable of, and I think that I also have the ability to even surprise myself beyond those expectations, which are pretty high. So that said, I I, I don't I don't I don't have my foot anywhere near the break. I don't I don't feel, you know, I, I'm not I'm not one of those people who wakes up and it takes me you know 45 minutes after I get out of bed to feel like I can stand upright and move without something hurting. Like I've never been like that. I, w- I, I'm, I might not wake out of bed and, you know, bound out because I'm not a morning person, but, you know, once I'm up, like I'm, I'm up, I'm good, I'm ready to go. So it's not, it's not so much a matter of, of, of age as much as it is, um, you know, I feel like I, I, I still have, I still have progress to make as far as getting better. So I, I when I feel, a, I when I feel like I can't get any better, then I'll, then I'll, then I'll consider something else. Rhonda, I got a question for you because, you know, we're, we're not, not in the same boat because I walked away for many years and, you know, but people ask me this all the time. And, and honestly, I ask myself this, you know, what is motivating you now? And just to give you an example is that I'm not motivated by titles and accolades and being on Team USA. And that doesn't motivate me in money or fame or, you know, people asking for my autograph. I'm finding other things that truly motivate me. And most recently, you know, playing national doubles with Alex, it was Alex's situation. I didn't care, you know, like, of course it's great to win. And I was happy to be on team USA, but what really pushed me and drove me to go compete, it was for something totally other than what looks like I'm competing for on the surface. Like, you know, so what's motivating you now? You have all the titles, you have all the accolades. What's pushing you to get out there and want to still go kick everyone's ass, like you said, every match? The end result. Like I, 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 I crave, I crave the end result, and I, and I, and I, I know that I'm not, I'm not done going for that yet. What, what mot- if, if you're asking what, what motivates me on the daily is, is just like I said, it's, it's knowing that I haven't, I haven't finished getting better. The only way I can explain that is if you imagine, you know, a little kid, a, a second or third grader on recess when the bell rings and they go, oh, like they don't want to be done yet. Like they want to keep playing. <laughs> that's a good like one. That, and that's exactly how it feels for me. Like, like, no, I'm, I still got stuff to do. I'm still, I'm still having fun. I'm still enjoying this. Like, I don't, I don't want to go in yet. Like I, I, I want to keep, I want to keep playing. I want to keep doing this. This is, this is what, what, what drives it's It's the competition itself. It's, it's the competition and craving the end result that that just makes me want to absolutely run through fire and brick walls. I love that. And, and I'm going to give this to Ellie because I know Ellie has a, a ton. Sorry, Ellie. But, you know, first off, Jen says hello. So you better say hello because she is watching. And Ellie hi, she says hello to you and I too. Yep. She <laughs> said, hey, babe. So hi, Jen. And, you know, Rhonda, something you're doing, which really motivates me daily now is you're inspiring and motivating so many people and you don't even know it. And you're touching them in a way that is keeping them going. And when you find that too, when you recognize that, it's gonna keep you going even further and harder. Like if I could wake up and just make one person better at anything in their life, I'm gonna do it every single day for the rest of my life. So keep doing what you're doing. Ellie, go ahead, buddy, I'm sorry. Thank you, Suds. No, no, you know, Suds, your questions are great. And they're, you know, sometimes, you know, Rhonda, sometimes Suds and I kind of have a little different approaches. I got a bunch of written down questions that I think a lot of people would want to hear. And and Suds' questions come a little more top of the head. And it's great because, you know, it, it leads us into different directions as well that we should be going in. And, and uh, I appreciate that. You know, you know, talking about, we can hear it in your tone that you just have a lot to give. So you're, you're talking about getting better at the sport of racquetball, getting better in life and everything, I'm sure at this age. Um, you know, so how do you, you know, how do you, how do you deal and cope with these players like a Paola that you got to go against and, and a Maria Jose and the other top <clears throat> slightly younger players than yourself? You know, what are the changes that you can make to, you know, win these matches in the future here coming up and, and attain more professional titles? Well, I mean, the, the, the beauty of it is, and this is another thing that I love about our sport is, I mean, yes, I've played against, you know, most of them let's say their whole career right we'll get to that (laughs) but but here's the thing like i i've gotten to watch them grow and evolve and get better too so that's part of the challenge that i enjoy like i'm not playing the same paola from two years ago i'm playing the paola that shows up you know now 
And by the same token, she's not playing the same Ronda she played two years ago. She's playing the Ronda that shows up now. So while the while the the names on on the draws might might end up, you know, crossing paths hundreds of times, you know, I don't I don't think any of us that that are really dedicated, you know, that obviously as we all are, if we're playing playing at this level for this long, uh, we're, you know, we're not necessarily the same version of ourselves as a player every time. So that that's I think the beauty in you know it's it's like you're not going to to do the same jigsaw puzzle over and over and over it's the pieces are different the, the the overall picture at the end of the day is different it's it's going to be a different experience even if it's the same player are, are wins and do wins and losses matter differently to you now than back in let's say you know 2004 2005 even earlier than that 2001 when you're getting going on the pro tour um, yeah i want to i want them more you want them more i want them more because we get when, when you when you get when you get that taste, you you crave it insatiably. Yeah, that's amazing. I can, I, can, because... I concur with that. By the way, those those wins, Ellie, they matter. They they feel there's something a little more special about them. It's almost like uh, you know, Rondo. Are you a better player today or 20 years ago? Smarter. Good answer. <laughs> yeah. Across Smarter. the board. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh -huh. but I mean, but, 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 I mean, how, how do you, how do you not be better by being smart? I mean, you know, just, just knowing, knowing, being, being, being at this level and learning to invent more options uh, to more options of, of execution is it, there, there's, there's a poetry to that. Yeah. And, and I, and I enjoy that. That's a cool way to put that. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Ellie, I mean, we, we can go on. You know, people ask me this one all the time, Rhonda. I'm going to ask you. So, Ellie, when was Rhonda's last U.S. Open win? What year? Or last number one in the world? Well, last, two different well, last U.S. Open okay. win. Uh, uh -huh. Event win was Rhonda 2010. Okay. Who wins? Last Wait, that's all I need was to 2011. Know. Okay. So, who wins? Rhonda today or the 2010 2011 Rhonda? You asking me? I'm, well, I'm not asking Ellie. I mean, well, yeah, I, 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 didn't, I didn't know that was, that was, that was between you two. <laughs> <laughs> um, today, today. Really? Yeah. I think the older version of me kicks my ass. I, I, I can do, but, I, when I watch, when I watch, when I watch video of myself though, even when I watch video of myself from, okay, even, even pre COVID, if I watch, if, if I was, if I was getting ready for, for the Boston stop in March and I watch a video in March from a match that I played in November, I'm looking at that November match going, Oh my God, I can't believe that was so bad. Like I can do that automatically now without even thinking about it. Like I don't even have to try hard and be like, oh, I need to do that this way. Like, like I, whatever that, whatever that one thing is, it's automatic now. So I don't, you know, and, 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 and that's one of the things that I enjoy about being able to reflect on past tournaments, past, past events, past, ma past matches and being able to see, to see that growth. I like, I like the feedback of what I, what I, what I've got, what I need and what I need to do to get there. I like, I like the instant feedback. Um, and it's the same thing in my workouts. There's certain exercises that I love doing because feedback wise, there's measurable growth almost every single time I, I do that, that exact exercise. So th that, that type of thing, that's why, you know, if you ask me who wins my, my 2010, 11 self versus myself today, I'm going to say today because I know what I can do now that I couldn't do then. Well, it'll be interesting to see when that answer changes because uh, at <laughs> some point for everybody it changes. But you know, we're all rooting for you. Uh, those who have known you for a long time, and even those that get to know you more recently, we're all rooting for you to play for as long as you possibly can, to be on tour for as long as you pass possible. You've already passed the threshold of not, you know, mattering really in terms of uh, you know, it's kind of a long career. Or not you're involved in an epically long career right now. And it's nowhere near the end in sight. You and Rocky are going to be connected like that. I, I believe in that, you know, in that situation, you're kind of, for me, you're kind of connected to Rocky and Alvaro and Kane in that way to a certain extent as well. And, and it's, it's very cool. So we're going to talk about your past here as we get, as we get into the next half an hour here, but before we do that, what's more important to you, an IR, an IRF world championship or Pan American games an IRF gold, or a pro stop, an LPRT pro stop victory after this COVID is over. Ooh, ooh, and why? I, and why as well? I, I, I don't think I can differentiate. Um, 
and and yes, and the you reason can. Yes, no, you can. No, because no, because I because my my honest answer is but that that's like saying Ginger or Marianne. I mean, they, it's both. I mean, <laughs> Marianne, come on. for sure. Marianne, Marianne, <laughs> Marianne. <laughs> <Not a lot>. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> No, but 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 here's why. But here's why. Obviously, obviously, right. being being an army brat, um, you know, my my dad was a lieutenant colonel in the army, and so I you know I grew up with the whole you know the 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 red, white, and blue, and and the the sense of of duty and honor, country, and all that, and um. So it's to me, it's it's a tremendous honor in in that regard to wear USA on my back, and so it's 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 being being able to have that honor of playing for my country when it's an IRF event, and also that's also the only the only time that there's ever a team aspect to an individual sport, and and there's that and from be, you know growing up as a basketball player as well that that's something that I that I miss from basketball in racquetball is that te- is that team dynamic to it mm-hmm. so those international events are the only only time where I, I i get to kind of have have that that honor sense of honor and, and especially you know i'm trying to honor my father um as well as uh being the best teammate that i can for another group of people that that i hope are as into it as i am to to do our best for our country so that's that's the irf and on on the lprt end uh that, that, that that's all on me that that that's either that's either that's either my success or my failure. I know that there there is no there is no finger to point. There is no and, and not that I'm that t- type of person anyway. But but I know that that whatever whatever transpires in that in that court at that at that LPRT event, you know, I go home, I go home, you know, by myself, and and that's that's my, um, you know, I I only had myself to rely on, if you will. Well, well, before Ellie takes over again, I'm going to, I'm still going to hold you to it here because that was great perspective. You know, I always, I agree with Ellie on this one too, so much that every team player or team athlete, which we've all done team sports should play an individual sport and it makes you better. And your answer touches on that, but I'm going to hold you to it. I'm going Joe Rogan style here. Okay. After this is all said and done, you get to take a U.S. Open cup home and put it on your shelf. Or you get to take an IRF gold medal and put it on your shelf. You only get one. Which one is it? I'm going to take the U.S. Open Cup to put my IRF gold medal in. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Ellie. Oh, yeah, we're not yours. You know, the the New York way wasn't going to kick her on that one. The California way was laid back on sure. Just that's a fine. That's a fine answer. I'm cool with that. But you know, can we can we can Scotty Mac do a poll, by the way, Ginger or Marianne? <laughs> Ellie and I think it's a no-brainer. Jen said both. Rhonda said, I mean, I guess you agree with both. I, I think Marianne's a no-brainer on that one. But anyway, <laughs> go ahead, Ellie. What do you got? Well, yeah, you know, we're talking about some of the international stuff. So I have this as my second question that in this little section of questions that I have, but I'm gonna go with it first. So you know, what are your favorite, what's your favorite city to play in? And I'm always asking the players this because I'm really curious about this. What's your favorite international city and what's your favorite city in the U.S. to play in and why? That's so hard to answer only because I like different places for different reasons. I mean, <laughs> I, know I you love, do. I, I, I'll get, <laughs> I, my, I think my, we all do. My gut reflex answer would be Costa Rica. I love, I love Costa Rica. It's a great I answer. Love, I love that club. <laughs> I do too. And there's a basketball court right there. It's a great basketball court. My favorite resort and volcano is just a few hours away. So I, I love, I, I'm going to go with Costa Rica for international. You're talking Costa about, Rica right there. You're talking about Arinal, right? Yeah. That's a great spot. Yeah, there's, there's I know. There's great hikes all around there. I mean, I'm lucky to have had some friends in Costa Rica also take me on those trips. And um, I, I, it's fun to watch you in Costa Rica because you do go get your warm up on on the basketball court and and you know hitting some shots and move it's a nice court so you can move around and really work and get get a lather going there uh so no yeah. surprise there in costa rica good answer a lather, a lather. <laughs> what about the u.s here because you know there's a lot of great spots for me it's chicago i've always said that uh so what about for yourself uh I, i'm you're gonna come back to me on that one because I, I got a i got a long litany of history to, to search no through in my brain to come up with that because on that same kind of concept though That's like right. What are your top three moments here in racquetball for yourself in terms, and, and there's so many of them for you. So that's why I got to just kind of, you know, top of the head a little bit here, but including your junior moments, juniors into, you know, just getting on tour, just beginning to be your U S national team self that, that, you know, 20 years later we're at now, uh, or just professional. 
Again, you're giving me a hell of a Rolodex to have to scroll through here, but um, I will pick a junior <laughs> one because you threw that out there. Uh, I, I would say there was a, a juniors in, it was at Los Cab. And uh, I guess our, I didn't know, I, don't, I didn't know this going into it, but I found out after um, our, our US team points came down to my match against uh, the Canadian girl. Um, God, what was her name? I know it, I can picture her. It's just not coming to me at the moment. Uh, Lori Jane, maybe? Nope, nope, nope. Wow. No, it was a lot more French. Um, mm. Man, I can't, can't mm. think of her name right now. Yeah. Well, anyway, I, I, I had never beaten her before and I beat her, I, beat, I, I don't remember if I beat her in two or three even, but I do remember um, Coach Winterton getting a bit emotional at the, at, the, at the team dinner afterwards. And he actually gave me the, uh, I actually still have it. It's, it's here at my mom's house. Um, it, was the, it was the junior team cup because my points put the girls ahead over the Canadian girls that put the team ahead over uh, whoever, whoever was, was trailing, was number two on the team. Um, was, was Christy Van Hees on that Canadian team or no? I didn't play her. I don't know if she was or not, but it wasn't her that, it wasn't her that I played. Okay. It was Chantal, Chantal, Chantal Tur, Turgen, Tur, Turgen, something like that. Sounds, Sounds like just a make French it sound French and, and we'll go with something that. Like that. Make it, something like that. Turgen. Yeah. Turgen. There you go. There you go. Chantal yeah, Turgen. And, yeah, when when it got a little emotional, gave me the trophy. I still have it. That was kind of a he got uh, emotional. I don't believe that. Can you uh, can you send someone a, in the house the there to time. grab it so that sometime in the show you could actually have it in front of you and let us see that baby? Anybody there uh, that can help you out with that? No, no, I don't want her to leave the screen here. No, no, no she's Rhonda. not leaving. Got it. You got to get help on that one, Rhonda. I, I don't I don't know if she knows where. It, Mom, <laughs> do you know where my junior <laughs> US, US trophy is? 20, my twenty three year great. old junior US see, team trophy. Rhonda, is. see what happens uh, when we give Ellie a white claw. He just <laughs> completely loses focus. He's got you running around the house. He's black got cherry. one black cherry white claw. You know, there's. You know, Rhonda, that question is an awesome question, right? But it truly is like almost impossible to answer. You know, what's your best memory or what's, you know, what, how about this? I, I'm going to, I'm going to turn it for you, right? Like people say, oh, what's your greatest win or what's your greatest victory or, you know, the best match you ever played. How about like, what's a really crappy thing that you remember happening that you didn't like, you know, that, that maybe, I mean, Something that said, wow, and don't go where I think you might because it's not, you know, I'm talking on court. I'm talking on court too. Um, something that happened on the court. Uh, can, it, can it be something that happened like before I got to the court, like I was on my way to play? Absolutely. Uh, it was National Doubles 2017. It was my first actual tournament being on a court after my dad died and I was driving to ASU and I, I had to make a phone call because I, I was, I was crying. I was heaving in the car crying so hard. I didn't, I didn't know how I was going to walk through that door and I had to call and I, and I didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want to see anybody. I didn't, I didn't, I was like too fragile to, to deal with the, Hey, great to see you or, Oh, I'm so sorry. Or, Hey, I'm so glad. like, I just, I, I couldn't, I couldn't deal with greetings in that moment. And I was, I had to make a phone call and, and I, I was lucky enough to kind of get smuggled in through a side equipment door of the facility and, and just kind of squirreled my way upstairs as quickly as possible. And I stayed away until I was actually called to the court and I got a, a text message to report to the court because, you know, and I had headphones in to make sure that I didn't get bothered from going upstairs down to the court. And, um, and then it was hard when I, when I walked on the court and I looked to that right glass wall and he wasn't sitting there. And that was the first time in my life. But- um, Great man, we all, we all love him and we know how influential he was and just such a, such a good man, you know, just yeah, a I'm gonna, really I'm good gonna, dude. I'm gonna miss seeing Dennis watching your matches, you know, if, if, especially yeah. if I get to see you in person again and watch him it's been a while for me seeing your matches in person, but you know, he was so invested in that. And uh, yeah, so, you know, we're going to, we're going to miss seeing Dennis there. What, you know, and on that note, you know, what, what do you think his favorite win of yours was like, what, which one really made him the most excited in the moment and that he, you know, you know, he cherished. 
my first U.S. Open. First U.S. Open in yep in in uh, no first U.S. Open was two thousand three. Let me let me look that baby up. Yeah, I was going to say it was definitely before yeah. 2006. Right. Come on, 2000, 2003, 2003. I actually know, I actually know my use opens. It's three, yeah. seven, nine, and ten. Um, yeah, it was 2003. <laughs> he 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 went out and bought me a new truck like on the spot, like in mm, Memphis. I remember that. that. I remember <laughs> yeah. that. What do you mean? Like you? What do you mean? He, he did you like drive it home? No, we actually. I mean, he. I never even got to see it in person, but it. We. Uh, I, I mean, I saw pictures of it, and he he made the deal when I won, and um, a few weeks later, it was on a truck, and it was uh, shipped over when all the paperwork was done with the back and forth. So, just an awesome man. But before yeah. I give it back to Ellie, we're we're gonna get to a question for you, Rhonda. And and Ellie and I aren't big on the questions, but you know, someone like you, there's a lot of questions coming in. So I'm this gonna ask this. This is a good one. This is a good one. So it says, when it's all said and done, and you have retired, and you are in the Hall of Fame, which you are a sure shot. Um, what would you like to be most remembered for in the sport of racquetball? And that comes from Will Smith, Pentagon. Yeah. Um, uh, this is going to sound like a cheesy answer because I know it's supposed to be a racquetball answer, but I mean, I, I really just hope that whatever, whatever I've done in my racquetball career has honored my family. Uh, that, that, I've, that I've honored, that I've honored my parents that I've honored my last name, that I've honored, you know, everyone who paved the way before me to allow me to do what I do. Yeah, it's, it's a, a great answer. answer. It's a great answer. You know, it's uh, hard to transition from such a great question and great answer and, and talking Good about question, your father, father for a second, but I'm going to get into something that's been impressive for me with you, Ron, and is your loyalty to companies over the years. You know, it's, you don't, you haven't switched often. Obviously change happens in the sport for all of us within companies. Uh, and you're one that seems like, you know, you try to stay with the company that's been loyal to you and you're loyal to them for as long as possible until it's just something happens that you have to go. Uh, so over the years, you've had a lot of rackets. What's been the racket in your hand that's just felt the best? Like this is, this is me. The original L3 white. Original O3, what? Yeah, that's right. The, use it for a couple of years after the, o, the OG. We were, we were trying. I mean, OG I think O3. we wanted you to yeah. use the newer rackets, but it was still the O3 right was still in the lineup. It's like four down now, and you're still. Is that an Ectolon racket? It. Yeah, it was. I think you were sponsored by that company at that time, Sati. So, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well done on remembering that. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a great Ectolon racket in the early 2000s, I believe. It was cool uh, looking. That's for sure. It, it just, uh, it, it, it had the power and the agility and the balance. And it just, it, it was the one that oh, let, felt let me, the most natural. I, 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 got, I got to interrupt. I got to interrupt. All right. <laughs> so I say this all the time and I want to know how you guys feel about this. Is it true, both of you, that pretty much any racket somebody puts in your hand, you're going to figure it out and be okay with it. And no, don't lie. I mean, as, as long as it's a good quality racket, can you play with it and be fine? I mean, a short answer is yes. I mean, at, the, right. at this level, that's the at, answer. At this, at, at this, at this level, I mean, yeah. I got a different but answer it, for that. But 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 it, but at the same time, if 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 something about the racket makes me feel like I have to change something in mechanics in my mechanics to make the racket work for me, that's when like if I have if this is literally the only racket in existence on the planet, yeah, I would pick it up and not put it down. But if I have another option to find something that feels better than this, then yeah, I, I don't I don't want to have to change. The mechanics of how I do what I do to accommodate the equipment when there's other equipment available that I don't have to change my mechanics for. Yeah, there's, there's, I, I know there was a racket, Ecto, Ellie, you might know it, some pink racket I used with Ectolon and it, it, and I used to break like five every event without even hitting a wall, but I just love the way it felt. And it was like, I don't know, it wasn't even one of the top retail rack, a Sirius maybe, something like that. I don't know. Long time Something ago, you're talking about there with the series, but uh, you know, I, I agree with that in theory for you two guys. And you guys, you know, we all kind of say the same thing about rackets. It's definitely not going to be an excuse. You can get used to it in a, in a couple of days and be be you know feeling like you can play well enough and pretty normal. But you know, we're we're at about 28 to 30 years of 21 to, to 22 inch rackets here, the oversized rackets that are normal now. But I played with the Pro Canics at the beginning when they were first starting to go oversized and have different designers, right. I use that bear claw, that bear shoe racket, the ASM. And Rhonda, you might've been just after with the Pro Kinnick stuff. So it did make a difference at the initial stage. 
but I would say over the last 15 to 20 years, you know, the rackets have pretty much been all great rackets across the board for most of the companies, whether you feel good about the grip or not, or something there that might be a little bit better than the other, but early on in the big, big racket stage, uh, you know, the Kennedy rackets had some, some, uh, catching up to do, but they did, but and that's where Mike yeah. Martinez came in and did some great designing and really got that, got the rackets to where now they're one of the top brands and have had a nice long run here after, uh, uh, a sinking moment there for a second. So I, I got I to that. I gotta throw in a second place on on the basis of nostalgia for, for that question. Um, I, I would say the Ectolon 03 White would be my, you know, wear the crown. But if I was gonna give a, give a second place to, to a racket, and I know I can't offend any companies because this one doesn't exist anymore, but the uh, the old Ridgecraft. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, 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 the purple the purple Ridgecraft when I was a, when I was a Wasn't junior. bad at the time. Wasn't bad no. at the time at all. That was a great racket at the time. I used it in 1991 and it was a little bit ahead of its time, I believe. And uh, they were right there yeah. with Exelon in terms of power source and the design shape. I thought it was yeah. pretty good racket. It's just hard to get a couple of, yeah. it's hard to get enough of them. All right, I'm, yeah. I'm moving away. I'm moving away from rackets. And by the way, Rhonda, I'm not sure if you know, but Ellie's birthday's in a couple of weeks, but we're not gonna talk about it on the show. I just might invite like everybody <laughs> that we know in racquetball. So anyway, are you going to Vegas? To yes. play in the outdoor? Yes. You are. Okay, awesome. So tell me, what divisions are you playing? Who are you playing with? I am playing four divisions. Uh, only? Oh, is that it? all? I Just think, four? I think, I think they would only let me play four. Unless That's I hilarious. switch to, like, you know, the paddles and the, you know, the other stuff. Um, Do it. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't like the paddles. What about handball? Yeah, you're an athlete. You, you would figure be awesome it out. awesome at handball. Uh, you be awesome at everything. Yeah, but I want to. I want to go there to win the racquetball stuff, not Good just point. play as many events as possible. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, that part. Let's let's oh, yes. let's stay let's stay yes. on point here. All right, so, so you're going we're to losing Vegas. it a little there. So yeah, yeah, you're going to Vegas. You're going to play the outdoor. You're playing four divisions. Give me the divisions and give me your partners. Uh, mixed three wall, mixed one wall with Soda Man. Uh, women's doubles. Uh, have partner. I don't know if she's confirmed for the event yet or not. So I don't know if I may have a partner opening or not. So I'll just shelf that and then uh, singles. Mix three wall with who? You left that one out. Soda. No, mix single, oh, mix oh. three wall and, and mix one wall with Soda Man. So just give a quick couple of comments about Soda because his games come such a long Get way. Out Get just, out of his way. Get out of his way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, but, but but really, from the first time he started playing outdoor to where he's at now is one of the better players in the world at outdoor. And, yeah, uh, he's when when he when he when he's on, he's actually really deadly. He's he's a physical specimen as far as what he can do with 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 his size. I mean, he's faster than you think he can be, and mm -hmm. he'll dive and get down, and then he'll pop right back up and, and you know hit the very next shot you try to hit right back at him. I mean, he's and his serves. He's got some absolutely deadly serves when uh, you know when 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 he's on point and um, you know the balls the balls bouncing bouncing the right way for him because I mean as long as he's healthy he's he's an absolute monster. Why are you playing singles? What is it about singles outdoor that that attracts you still? I get to run around more. Yeah, yeah. I like tougher, I, I, it's a better workout. Yeah. It's a different it's, workout. It's 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 a it's a you you have to you have to have a more you have to have a more athletic physical presence and you have to have a more cerebral um, thought process in in a shorter amount of time because you have so much more court to cover and you have so many so many different shots at your disposal than you do indoor. Absolutely. What are your thoughts on uh, Kane and Ben entering the event and, and what that does for the event this year? I think, I think it, it, it brings a, the, a much brighter billboard to Vegas. I mean, whatever, whatever, whatever glitz and glamour you're going to see on, on Las Vegas Boulevard that, you know, they're going to be certainly be the beacon of it for that event. I mean, the fact that it'll be my first time seeing Kane play outdoor ever um, I think, I think it's going to be the same sensation for everyone. It's, it's the, oh my God, I got to see this. It's, it's going to be the main event. Yeah. All right. Question, cool. question for you. What would be your, I, by the way, just, just so the three of us know, I think they're going to win. You know, Kane's the best player in the world. You put a racquetball racket and a racquetball in his hand, you give him a little bit of time. He's going to figure out how Absolutely. to win. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I don't. Not only that, I, no but, offense to any of the outdoors, but this kind of is part of this question. You know, um, Rhonda, what what advice would you give to somebody that's transitioning 
from indoor to outdoor? Um, be open to retraining your instincts because mm. your, 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 in, your indoor instincts will serve you to a point. But when you play against a, a more, and I'm not talking about myself because I still consider myself an indoor player. But when I play outdoor, I, I still feel like the rookie who's trying it for the first time. So I, I'm not saying that I'm the savvy outdoor player. But when you play- you've played it, you've played it a ton, right? Oh yeah, you've played it. Guys, I play like three times a year during those but tournaments. Still. But still. Buddy, buddy, buddy. That, buddy. You, yeah, I, no, I, I, but I, I, I know, but I, I, do, I do not consider myself a savvy outdoor player. I consider myself okay. the person who- when I show up, I have to, you know, give me like three Ellie's or four not sessions buying it, on the court. Riz dog, Ellie's that's not fine. buying it. Look, that, that's fine. But, but my, my point is when you play, when you play an actual outdoor player who somebody like Iceman, somebody who knows every inch of the court, every line and every corner, and they can, they can be pinpoint accurate with those outdoor shots that we never see indoor. And it forces your body to move differently to react to those shots. That's a whole different level. I'm not betting against you. you know, so. hearing, hearing and I know Veronica's not so. Hearing that you only play three or four times a year, I know where you're coming from. I mean, it's, you know, it's a, it's a lot of respect for the outdoor players as well that play it all the time and, and have that, that, you know, the ideas of what they want to do with their shot selection. That's what you're talking about. Retraining right. your, your, your instincts, because our instincts right. as indoor players are to do what might not be the best thing for you outdoors. And so right. you certainly have to retrain that lob instinct and the, the service instinct and return of serves and so and ceiling balls you, don't but, hit those <laughs> yeah and ceiling balls are not happening out there but you know for your the amount that you've played out there I think a lot of the outdoor people would consider you a pretty savvy outdoor player at this point just because you have so much experience and you have accolades to back them up too and you've played against some of the great players and with you know Martha McDonald I know was your partner for a bunch of years there and she's one of the legendary outdoor players um, and we were only seeing her here in her, you know, a little bit slightly later years, um, not that yeah. old, but not young anymore, super young where she was playing back in the day and uh, right. out there in Florida and playing great ball. So, uh, um, yes, I don't, absolutely. you know, you're, you're definitely going to always be one of the threats to win in, in outdoor racquetball it has a little bit to do also with you being willing to sacrifice your body on, on the cement as well. And so, you know, for, and, and a lot of people are interested in it's like, you know, how did, how did you become the diver you are? and you've been over your career, like how, how, how do you have that in your soul to, to, uh, you know, release and get the ball? I've never not had it. I, like, I, I just, I don't, I don't have my, my instinct is, is get the ball. I, I don't have the instinct of, of, Oh, look, there it goes. Like, I, I just, I don't, I don't know what that feels like. I, I know that there's times that I've, I've been in mid air and, you know, reg like, why did I die for that? It's, this is, it's on its third bounce and I haven't hit the ground yet. You know, like it's, it's not, it's not an intentional, it's certainly not for show. It's, it's an instinctive, you know, if you step out into the sidewalk and a car is coming, your instinct is to jump back out of the road. I mean, it's, it's the same way when I see a ball that, that I, my, my instinct is to go get it and, and I'll, I'll throw myself in that direction as far as I need to, to, to attempt to do that. What would you tell young players, boys or girls about how to condition themselves to do that? Because uh, quite frankly, with the juniors that I work with, it's, it's not second nature at all. I don't have any divers. And back in the day, we were all divers as kids. Like, I wanted to get a ball. Yeah. The mentality. And, it's a wiring. And, yeah, it, and, and that's just it. It's a wiring. You, you, you can't I – don't, I, don't, I don't feel responsible for rewiring the way someone else – you know, someone else's reflexes. And to be honest, I think the, the responsible uh, thing to say is, you know, if you have better footwork, you don't have to dive. Well, at the speed of the game, yes, sometimes diving is going to happen. But as far as if it's a natural instinct, then make sure that, that you're, you're doing it in a way that, that you can do it safely and pop back up and remain in the rally. If, you, uh, if it's not an instinct, then, then don't try to force yourself into it at the risk of causing injury where, you know, as soon as you leave the ground, your instinct is to tuck and roll because you, you don't want to have the landing. So it's either instinctive or it's not. I don't, I don't know how you can actually ingrain that in somebody who doesn't already have it. So I got a small theory and, and, and it, you know, I see it with the juniors and even adult players, uh, especially 20 some 30 some that may still be able to release is, you know, people who stand a little more straight up when their opponents about to hit the ball are less likely to retrieve a ball and then maybe even leave their feet. But yet if they're down in what we would consider, you know, a good center court position, ready to move similar to, and I'm going to bring your basketball life in. This is going to be a smooth transition here to your basketball life, similar to guarding somebody in basketball out on the perimeter and really not wanting them to blow by you down ready. But 
you know, that for me, that's the thing that I try to correlate it to is like, look, you got to be down low to even think about diving because you're not going to do it from standing straight up. You have right. to think first of all about flexing the knees and being down low so that that dive doesn't hurt as much as a straight standing straight up and then running and diving is really hard to do. Right. And so that on that note, what, what, you know, what has basketball, your life in basketball, uh, you know, through your early twenties, what, what has that, how has that helped your athletic career here in racquetball? And Rhonda, and Rhonda, also, while you're answering that question, tell us what you're doing with basketball now and coaching, because I find it incredible. Uh, well, I'll, I mean, okay. Little, <laughs> little disclaimer for my, my whole life, people have asked me, you know, which do you like better, racquetball or basketball? And, and the truth is I, I can't pick one. However, in Costa Rica in 2017, that was when I, I, I kind of realized and admitted that I'm a basketball player pretending to be a racquetball player this whole time, because there is, there is this... Um, there's just this natural thing that happens with me with when a basketball's in my hands that I wish it happened to me when I have a racquetball racket in my hands. If, if I, if I was half the basketball player in, in racquetball, uh, you know, with, with a racket, then I, I, I think I, I'd be absolutely unstoppable. But, um, what I'm doing with, uh, with racquetball or with basketball now to answer your question, Suds was, uh, you know, again, during Corona, uh, a lot of, a lot of sports shut down and a lot of, um, you know, schools had to cancel their teams. Um, my, my high school that I played for Thunderbird high school actually hired me for, uh, over a month to do virtual training over zoom with, with their team. Um, and we did that, uh, two days a week and I would take them through workouts. I would take them through ball handling drills. I would take them through anything that they could do in their, in their bedroom or in their living room or, you know, out on their patio. Um, and there was no, uh, the gym was shut down. Obviously the school was shut down and I don't know what happened in other parts of the country, but here in Phoenix, when everything was super locked down and they shut down the parks, they tried cordoning off the basketball courts in a lot of different ways. And eventually they just literally removed the rims from the backboard. So you couldn't even, you couldn't even yep. <laughs> bypass their, their systems. So, um, you know, there was, a, there was a lot of zoom coaching that kind of led into, um, some private coaching that I was doing and continue to do with, uh, some kids, um, in their driveway and we've recently found a park that that has been open and w once a week maybe I'll, I'll take them um, you know one at a time uh, over to that park and, and be able to get some actual shooting done but in the meantime it's been it's been ball handling it's been it's been box out drills it's been defensive slides it's been passing drills it's been um, you know shooting form you know in the driveway with with no hoop to, to worry about and just working on you know the absolute fundamentals um, that you can do with and without a hoop and, uh, and also throwing in some fitness in there to make sure that, that, you know, that their bodies can handle the rigors of, you know, getting in better, but getting better in basketball, making the team, getting to play games again, eventually, and being able to keep up with the pace of play. Yeah, there's, there's no doubt, Rhonda, if, if our daughter ever decides to play basketball, you'll be the first phone call, you know, and, and I know you're working the mental strength and conditioning all the time as well, but do you have any, any desire to be like, a WNBA coach, you know, Ellie and I know you so well. And like, there's no doubt that we believe you could do any of this stuff. You know, um, um, we, we talk about it and you're, you're to me, the greatest female athlete, all around athlete to ever play racquetball, but your basketball skills and your history and the, to hear you talk about it, you know, what would be like a goal? Would you love to be, would you, would you like to be part of WNBA as a coach? Cause we know and for those of you watching that may not know, Rhonda could have played WNBA as a player. I still want to play in the WNBA. I still want to actually play. I, I, I haven't thought about coaching, um, hmm. but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be opposed to it, but I want to play first. And, and I think that I don't, I don't have, not that I couldn't coach, but it, it doesn't cross my mind as a goal yet because I haven't, uh, I, I haven't satisfied my appetite to play yet. So how's that happen? Does this come, does, do you make a move to make this happen or is I, this? I am, I am, I have, I am and have been trying to get my foot in the door. It's just a matter of, and then, well, you know, the bubble thing didn't help, you know, the, the whole team's in Florida. Like there's, there's nothing that I can do here. And now the Mercury season is actually over. And that is the team that I would prefer to play for. Cause that's the team that I have season tickets for. So that's the team that I want to see win. Therefore that's the team I want to be a part of it's not a deal breaker. If I am in the WNBA because I'm playing for another team and not the Mercury, great. Just tell me where to sign. I'll, I'll sign. Um, the, wow. whole, the, whole, the whole thing of it is for me is that I, I, know, I know what I can contribute as a shooter. I know what I can contribute as an athlete. And I know that I will not be the fastest one on the court, 
but I will probably have some of the fastest hands. Um, and I know that I can make, make those defensive contributions because, you know, I'll be Patrick Beverly esque, you know, pain mm. in the ass for anybody who's on the ball. So, Vicious. Yeah. So, so I, I, I still, I still have a extremely strong desire to play professional basketball. That's very cool. And I hope that becomes something that you uh, attack and that we're talking about and having you on the show again to talk about that, because that's, that would be a huge transition story from racquetball into something. Wouldn't like surprise that. me if you're, in, if you're playing professional basketball, I'd be like, duh. You know, if you text me and you're like, <laughs> oh yeah, I just made the, you know, the Phoenix Mercury. I'd be like, yeah, what, what took you so long? So long? <laughs> what, what, what about you know, defensive basketball specifically, but offensive as well. But what, what about that has transitioned to racquetball for you? And when did you know, when did you feel that transition as a, as a kid, teenager, whenever? I mean, I grew up playing both. I mean, I mean, I remember uh, we had a, we had a junior Arizona team that we started. I, I was our, our junior president for a few years. And, and I mean, I would have school, then I would have basketball practice right after school, come home, grab a quick snack, go to the club and have two hours worth of racquetball practice and then go to dinner do my homework sleep for a few hours get up and go to the gym again at five o'clock in the morning and do racquetball basketball and lift then go to school and I mean that was my that was my my week repeat and by the way nobody made me get up at five o'clock in the morning go to the gym my dad didn't didn't force me into that I forced him into that I mean he was going a couple of days a week anyway I wanted I'm the one who wanted to get up at five and go before school because again that to me this was all stuff that I wanted to do this was this was the recess that I didn't want to end um, that said, I did not let my, my study suffer. I was, I was on the honor roll every year. I had, you know, an A average, ask my mom, she's sitting right there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I mean, it, it was, it was kind of an all around just dedicated to everything that was right in front of me. And, um, what, what I realized translated was not just the end indi the individual aspect of racquetball really helped me be able to have the confidence and, and being able to know that I could count on myself in, in a team setting in basketball and vice versa, knowing that, that I had a team behind me that trusted me in basketball led to more confidence in racquetball. Physically, the footwork in, in racquetball is, is almost identical to playing defense in basketball. Um, and then as far as hand speed, obviously we know racquetball, you have, your hands have to be lightning fast to keep up with the ball that's moving 180, 200 miles an hour. And for, um, you know, basketball, just having the hand speed to control the ball, to keep it away from a defender or have the hand speed to knock a ball away from, from someone that you're, that you're guarding. And then being able to have that uh, hand-eye coordination to judge the disc distance to and from the basket. Same way you've got to judge a ball that's moving that fast, figure out how to get there, do something with it and stay in the rally. I mean, all those things kind of re rely on the same natural, um, natural abilities and, and instincts, even though the sports are completely different the, the way that you have to engage your mind and body to accomplish those things at that level are very, very similar. Yeah, Rhonda, there's no, you know, the three of us played basketball our whole lives. And, and one of the secrets for me when I was playing, you know, competitively professional racquetball was I was playing basketball all the time. And besides what you just said, which is 100% true, and I still say it today, that the footwork, you know, the defensive footwork, the staying low, the engaging, the aerobic, the anaerobic, you know, there's no doubt the similarities are tremendous. And, and I don't care if you're a great ball player like Rhonda is, a basketball player, or you're just a guy that likes to shoot around and run around up and down the court, you know, go play basketball. It's an incredible cross training sport, you know, and but for me, the biggest thing was especially, you know, being in New York was that competitiveness, you know, dealing with that hardcore, like, you know, it was just a fight. It was a battle. And that really helped me and transitioned, you know, really well into racquetball. But, you know, you touched on something that's super, super true. You know, in the three of us, we do work with juniors and we do work with kids. And you, you said that nobody forced you. You know, dad wasn't waking you up at 5 a.m. to go work out. That is so true, Rhonda. And I preach that all the time. And now that I'm getting into coaching and stuff, you know kind of right away, you know, where that kid is or that player is. Because if you have to hold their hand and drag them, one of the similarities, you know, I've been fortunate enough to, to talk to and discuss a lot of, you know, different sports and businesses in life and with champions and you're a true champion, you know, and, and, and you, everybody has that same kind of wiring. Like nobody, nobody ever forced me to go practice or forced me to go hit a backhand. I just wanted to go hit it and I wanted to hit it harder and better and, and be quicker. And, and that's super important. And that's something like these young kids really need to pay attention to when someone like you speaks, because it's so true, you know, if, if mom or dad has to wake you up, 
or carry your bag, don't call me Rhonda or Ellie because we're gonna tell them for you to pick up your bag and take it yourself. And, and with that said, let's get back into racquetball a little bit. You know, are there any junior girls, Rhonda, from anywhere in the world that jump out at you as somebody that's talented? You know, like Ellie said, when, when we saw you shooting the basket and then seeing you in the court and saw that athleticism, we were like, she's gonna be a pain in the ass for everybody that's playing <laughs> racquetball. You know, are there any girls, you know, even current or even throughout your time that you saw and you were like, that girl has a chance if she wants to be? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yep. I'm not gonna name names, but yeah. Hey, no, I, you you have to name names. You you're in that position. You can name names, and then I want to know what you see or saw. Uh, there was a girl in, in San Antonio, uh, Shane, that I got on the court with one time, and and I gave her a couple of pointers, and she was able to pick those things up right away. Her she name was is able Shane to... Diaz, and she's a good little player. And 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 she for for how little time she had been in the sport um mm -hmm. from from what i saw i mean she she was she was a sponge i mean she she was just able to pick things up and you know like a, a small tweak here or or a big hey try this there and and just i mean first or second time and just i mean naturally and you know didn't didn't look like you know choppy didn't look um uncoordinated at all i mean it's every 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 little Every little hint I tried to drop, she 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 picked it up right away and and was able to execute it right away. Um, she I, I think and and I think she was also extremely athletic too. Uh, I think she's one of those players that whether it's racquetball or or any other sport in addition to racquetball, she she will probably be one of if not the best player on the team. Um, My question in the similar fashion, it might be a little easier. You know, it's the same same concept as Sudzi. There is is you know out of the girls in the U.S. right now. Who has a chance to win pro stops in the future? Who has a chance to win gold medals at, at the adult level? Are there any right now? And I know, you know, Sudsy just said, you're in the position to be able to answer this. Like, you know, you know, I, I understand you're still playing these girls and they want to compete against you. And, you know, they probably are going to bring their best for you every time because you're you. And that probably excites you more than even bothers you. So feel free. I mean, they're going to all love you no matter what. Who I mean, I has a chance? Are there know. any? I, I don't know how, 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 like, how, how young is too young? How old is not young enough for this question? But I mean, like three, three right off the top of my head that I know are at least in their twenties are Erica Mania, uh, Lexi and Kehlani. I mean, just right off, right off the top of my head, but those are also the three that I probably see the most often too. Those three are going to have to deal with a lot of international players who are, you know, really doing well already right now as young players and yeah. more coming behind that. So, those three are great players are do any of them win any pro stops and they're not you know you know how hard pro stops are to attain and i and and um, um short short answer is yes do i think it's going to happen you know this year maybe not but but do i think that they have you know the athletic ability the potential and and the you know the the fortitude to see that through to to whenever that day is yeah cool that's is, good is that, that that's good to hear because you know for some of us that are keep our eye on the top players and who's going to be on the U S team and whether they're in their twenties or 45, like Sudsy is right now. And just like old on the team. It's, you know, it's really, Rhonda, what's, really up, what, what's up with that? Well, that's the birthday know. thing that two weeks, you know, my birthday's <laughs> in two weeks thing. Blah, blah, blah. The, you know, we're really excited to, to see that someone like you thinks that, Hey, there's girls that are coming that are going to win stops that are going to be successful from the U S here. Cause Times are rough in the juniors, and you know if you look at the rankings, you'll see a lot of international players. I mean, you and Rocky are the ones that are consistent top five players here for the last long time. Wow, long Wild. time. So well, and 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 here's the thing. I mean, that's a, a little bit of that is is twofold. Do I? I mean, when I when I'm when I'm mentioning those those U.S. names, do I think that that they have the ability? Yes. Do they have it? in themselves that that is what they want to do and the desire to do what it takes to get there. I can't answer that question. Do I, do I know what is happening with the sport as a whole that will allow them those opportunities? I can't answer that question either. But from, from what I have seen of them thus far, as far as what I think their potential is in their, in their athletic ability and in, in the way that they play now and the way that I think that they could play as they get better. Yes, absolutely. I think they have that, that, 
that in them in the future. So, I mean, it, it's, it's nice to hear, but I can tell you this, if, if I was one of any of those girls that you just mentioned, you know, if, for you, it's like, you're not, you're still competing. And I personally know what that's like to be competing and say, I'm just going to go kick everybody's ass. And oh, by the way, I can help you too and coach this or that, but I'd be knocking down your door. Like I talk about the international girls all the time. And I'm like, if you really want to be the best, you should be begging my wife to help you. She's not competing. She's, you know, she has all this knowledge and ability. And like, you're someone that, yeah, if I'm any one of those girls, I'd be petitioning you to be the team USA coach for the women's side for sure. Even the men's, I'll take some, some of your advice. <laughs> you know, if you got something for me, give it to well, me. I mean, I, I've been watching you since before I started playing tournaments. So I, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I know, I know your game a little bit. <laughs> So, so Rhonda, let me ask you this, because we're going to wrap it up here shortly, but what advice would you give to not just the U.S. girls, but, you know, any girls nationally, internationally that want to play racquetball full time, you know, what would you tell them considering all things, you know, considering the times with COVID, considering everything you've experienced in the sport, you've worn many hats, you know, not just a great champion, you know, what advice would you give somebody that, that really wants to make racquetball their life? Uh, first of all, have fun. I mean, if, even if you want to do this for your job, like I do, don't, don't let it ever become a job that cons consumes you to the point that you're not having fun anymore. It's a game. It's supposed to be fun. If it's not fun, then it's, it, you're not doing it for the right reason. That, that's number one. It, it should be fun. Um, through through all the aches and pains, through all the, through all the growing pains, through all the ditching bad habits to pick up new ones to to be better, you know, through through that that whole cycle, it should all still be fun. You know, the the, the process of what you get to do should be fun. Um, number two is get comfortable being uncomfortable. Every everything everything is not a breeze. Everything is not a win. Everything does not every ball does not bounce your way. Every call doesn't go your way. And and I and I mean physically as well. I mean you you have to put your body through the rigors to make to make your your matches your hardest matches the easiest thing you'll feel you'll physically go through. Um, and then uh, also don't don't let it don't let it consume you to the point that you know you have no other interest in your life. I think I think overall balance in who you are as a person is is critical to being a, a competitive athlete at the highest level because if you don't have that balance that 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 mono focus can actually uh deteriorate your your ability and and eat away at you and in, in on the inside in places that um you know are hard to find a band-aid for if you don't find balance in other ways yeah it's a lot of good advice right there Rhonda, for sure you know I like to do some where I put together some questions where you give us quick answers if you want if you need to elaborate feel free but these are meant to be a little quick answers and you'll see what I'm saying is go. A couple of them were some of the questions I had in my main question. So you might elaborate on a few here for sure. But uh, Suds, are you ready for this? What do you mean? Am I part of this? Do I have to answer? I just want to make sure that you're ready for this right here. Is this going to, this going to take a second here. All I'm right, Ron, you ready? There's good. I'm going to need you Sudsy, on one of these questions for, to have a little time clock. Sh should I text Julius to bring you another white claw? <laughs> no, <he's, laughs> that dude, I don't even know where he is. He's 18 now. And you know, it's, I don't, what's Sunday night. I'm not sure where he is right now. So like wait, wait, that. wait, he's 18. Yeah. He's 18 in college and he's out right when now. When did that happen? He was house. like five a minute ago. I know Jordan's really going to trip you out when you see her next. They grow real quick. So, oh, okay, here we go. Rhonda, what's your cocktail of choice? Schlievo. What is a Schlievo? <laughs> uh, sh Schlievo, it's a, it's, a, it's a Serbian plum brandy drink. It's not a White Claw. <laughs> no, it's not a White Claw. No, I don't know my booze at all anymore. Uh, okay, <laughs> Suds, so you got the clock ready here? I need you on a 10-second clock. Ready? Well, you'll know. Pressure. You'll start in 10 to 12 seconds. Well, you're going to like this. You ready? Here don't, start, go. don't start until she's ready to go. You know what I mean? Like, here we go. Go. Let me tell the question first. Let me ask the question first. How many nicknames for yourself can you name in 10 seconds? Ready? Go. D's, Ron DZ, Rocks, 2 3, Rizzy, uh, Raj. Um, I'm letting you go a little more. I, and that's going. all I got. All right. That's all good I got. enough. I knew you'd be able to get to the heart of the ones that we say something. <laughs> 
<laughs> something in the Ron Dizzle DZ area for some reason. Where did that come from, too? Like, I, I call a Riz dog. You know, it just depends. Rizzy, Riz dog. It's, it depends yeah. on the moment. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yep. you know, like I'll be talking about her in my house. I'll, I'll say something like, you know, our, our Dizzle over here is, you know, back in the semis, <laughs> yeah. back in the finals, and everyone knows who I'm talking about. It's pretty funny. <laughs> It's fantastic. That's fantastic. All right. Good job on that. All right. Um, and this is one of the questions I had earlier. Na quickly name some of your best practice partners over the years. Uh, Royster. Sean? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it wasn't Good one. Sevy. Huh? It wasn't Sevy. Could be soon, though. Kids, kids got a little game. Uh, God, that's, that's Erica. These seem like I recent li ones. That I, seems I li like a recent I, one. Well, it, it is, and I also like playing Mella because I get to talk. I get I get to talk crap to her because she needs she needs help with that a little bit. Um, man, that's any guys, any like open guys from your area over the years that have been um, there for you. It's it's been it's been fun it's been fun to play crosser a few times. He's he's another one I get to talk crap to. Uh, <laughs> Bron I love I love practicing against Bronson because um, yep. he's he knows my, he knows my game yeah he knows my game so well um, let's see Preston I I played a little recently that was fun uh, honestly it feel like it feels like I was on the court so long ago I'm like I'm like drawing blanks you're drawing little blanks it's okay I you am drawing blanks. Good drawing blanks you name some good names there now if pro mixed doubles was more of a thing. Uh, which it should be. I really, really want to see that become much more of a thing when the indoor opens up and even in the outdoor as well. Who are you going to first? Who's your ideal partner? Who's your male? It would either be Kane or Ben. Okay. I've actually played, I've actually played with Ben before though, but Kane is lefty and I prefer the left. So it would be one of those two. And by the way, that's something that, you know, really can't be taken for granted is Kane's coming into this outdoor tournament playing with a great outdoor player like Ben. Ben mm -hmm. is a great outdoor player and, and like yourself, he's sacrificing. He's leaving, he's leaving flesh on the court there and those things on the outdoor. And he just, he comes up with raspberries all over his hips and, and arms yeah. from those events. It's pretty, it's pretty impressive for him to, to be able to do that stuff. Okay. Yeah. I love playing with Ben. We're moving on to the three toughest matches for you of all time. Like who are your three toughest opponents? Uh, of all time, like they don't have to be playing anymore. Yeah, they can be done. <laughs> okay. A lot of them are. Yeah. A lot of them are. Ever. <laughs> I'll go. I'll go. Paola and yeah. um, Christy. Man, he's, and he's Carrie back. Walkle gave me fits because she she got to everything and didn't hit it very hard. So she Not was using my power against she she would use my oh. power against me and it would piss me off all the time. So. <laughs> Carrie, Carrie gave me fits because she got to it, and then she just kind of she placed it so well it drove me nuts. She was yeah. very hard. That, that game style was hard for me to play. Named, you, you just named two of three players that don't even play anymore. You know, and, and you like, said I could. You said ever. Those no, are those no, are the ones no, that came to No, no, hundred percent. But if I'm one of these girls that are looking to compete against you, I want to know who Christy and Carrie are now. We all, <laughs> all know who Paola is, so yeah. we might have to have them on the show. Ellie, go ahead. Okay, you're known for different pregame meals, different meals. I don't want to necessarily say it has to be a pregame, but it's like a meal in the city, especially on these long IRF trips. So what is your favorite pregame meal of all time? And if it's in a certain city, go ahead and name that city. Um, I, I'm just going to go with what stands out. Uh, actually, I'm going I'm to give two that stood out. Um, in Korea, it was uh, 100 grams of beef bulgogi beef and then that was like 13 sides um but it was unbelievably delicious whatever the cut was it was amazing and then in uh in chile there was a restaurant called guernica yep. hearts of palms yeah hearts of palms with everything i had God. i i would have an app dude, i ate so much i would have two hearts of palm salad then i would order order a shoulder of lamb that i'm not kidding <laughs> hang hung off of both sides of the plate right. i i mean i there was a salad in there somewhere there was there was some kind of chocolate crepe for dessert in there. So, I mean, I spent a hundred dollars on just myself on dinner every night. And even if I ate dinner somewhere else, I would be walking back to the hotel from that dinner and stop at Guernica and eat, eat that meal anyways, because I can, I can verify that. And that was, a, that was the hidden gem of that tournament was how much great food was right around our, our hotel right there. Do you know that, do you remember that, that, that was the one that also had the in and out uh, food cart 
inside the courts, inside inside the gym, inside, and they had in, the they, they had an In and Out, and they and they had In and Out hot dogs, not just burgers. Interesting. And I know yeah. that I know that those worked in a pinch. You know, when those some of us were didn't have a whole lot of time between games. It was a fun event for sure, in a lot of yeah. different ways as well. Okay, name name the first three goats in any sport that come to mind. Jordan. Tiger. Hmm. I'm going to go Gretzky. Interesting. Oh, cool. That's a cool that a good question. Gretzky. Ellie, that was a good question. That, that, was, that was a good question. That was, that was a, a solid question. question. I was thinking yeah. Federer. I, I, I like the Jordan Tiger. I was going Fed or I was going... That's a good question that you're bringing up right there. Is Federer going to end up the greatest of all time, in your opinion, or is he going to be overtaken by one of two guys here? I mean... Djokovic is going to beat him in titles, but does that mean he's better? Is he a better? Is he a bigger goat just because he has more titles? That's the real think? question. That's that. I, I don't. I don't know that. That. I, don't, I mean, we're speculating on how each of their careers is going to end at this point. Well, those guys who are knows, like. Who knows what either one of them has left to do? I believe those guys are Nadal, thirty-four, and Djokovic at thirty-two or thirty-three. So they're pretty close to each other in age, with better like a good three or four years ahead of them in time. So personally, I think it's going to be Nadal. But Djokovic is the front runner because he has a little more time, theoretically. But that's a you just, interesting you just side like question. Nadal haircut because you and Nadal have the same haircut right now. Uh, yeah, I think I'm balding a little more here, but he's balding more back here than me. Yeah, that's for sure. All right, so you already I know you're gonna get this one because you already said it earlier, and you know you told us about doing some work for your high school uh, during COVID. But uh, can you name your high school mascot and your college mascot? Chiefs and Bears. Chiefs and Bears. That was easy. Come on, that was easy. People, well, a lot of people forget that, though. I mean, a lot of a lot of people, you know, don't really care as much. But when you're in sports, you know, you're playing for it a little bit more, and there's a little more pride there involved. Vicky your, Onesti says she misses you. Oh, thanks, Vic. <laughs> We're lucky up here in California, NorCal. You know, Scott Scott brought her out here. They're getting married. I saw them get engaged live uh, a couple of months ago. So we're lucky. That, that was awesome. That was awesome. She's, That's she's, awesome. she's an awesome woman. Scott. Vicky Scott is well. super cool. Yeah. She is super cool. What's your favorite shot in racquetball and why? Backhand splat. Cause I like the sound it makes. And I love just the, the power that you have to generate to hit that. Right. So how early, I mean, did you get to see Sudsy's back and you know, talk about a little bit about seeing his backhand splat and splat over the years splat. A lot. <laughs> the splat over the years and you know what what you took from watching suds hit that because that's you know that's his defining shot in a lot of ways it is he but he he hits it in a way that i haven't ever seen anyone else hit it though i mean he hits it in a way that i understand that he uses his whole body but the racket i mean you know when i first saw it i, I remember i remember thinking how does he swing that fast mm, like yeah. like the, the the racket speed almost surpasses the 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 rest of the body that he's using to generate that power. So, yeah, he, you know, Sudzy, one of the things for that I noticed about your splat back in the day, and you know, maybe Rondo will have a comment on this, is that you had different contact levels to it. You know, some were higher because it was a high ceiling ball. You felt like getting radical with him bringing down. Some you would take off the back wall, maybe at a certain height, and then some you let drop a little more. And the ones that you let drop are the ones for me that were we're kind of, uh, you know, mechanically speaking, cool because it seemed like your back elongated just a little as that bat, as that ball dropped and you would stay down low on that level. But that process of just letting it drop a little closer to the front wall, to the floor and making that contact, it was like you actually extended just a little bit more at the end. Um, you know, so that's what those are, you know, that shot wasn't just from one spot. It was from so many different spots and it was really tight all the time and, and uh, hard to see when it hit the sidewall, front wall quite often yeah well done <laughs> thank you <laughs> well done on that thank you. um okay what's your go-to restaurant at home in arizona and because i know you lived in la for a little while and la is iconic more so than arizona what about la as well la was easy um it was a restaurant called mini bar um it was a tapas restaurant which means that all the portions were kind of small so you could order you know a little bit of everything um and they had this ridiculous uh, chocolate soup for dessert. Um, there was like this, it was this melted Ghirardelli chocolate and they would put like a tuft of uh, mm. marshmallow in it and then have a little bit of biscotti on the side. And just by the time everything melted into each other, it was just, it was top shelf. Would, um, would Ghirardelli be your go-to chocolate? 
No, I'm not. Yeah, no, my mom's the chocoholic. I didn't necessarily inherit that gene, but I mean, I, I do like some chocolate. Chocolate is a must. But I, yeah, I mean, I don't dislike chocolate, but I have a sweet tooth like five times a year. So, hey, um, just just for the record, Rhonda, I just got I got to keep Riz Dog in line here. Jen did comment, and she said, Moira or Moira, M O I R A. Moira is the sushi restaurant not too far from uh, from my house, but. I, I'm gonna say this anyway, even though they 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 actually closed because of COVID, and I'm actually heartbroken over it. If I hit the lottery, I'm reopening it. There was a restaurant called Fajitas that I basically grew up at with my dad. My dad and I started going there the second day it opened in 1986, and basically anytime I was with my dad, we would eat there four to six days a week. So, I was raised on Fajitas. Now Moira is the spot because it's right down the street. But uh, yeah, it's it's definitely one of those two. Last three questions for you here, Rhonda, from me on my quick answers. What's the one talent you have that not many people know about? Singing. Yeah, I know about that. I was hoping you were going to say that <laughs> because I've I've witnessed it more times than once. But I've witnessed it away from the racquetball club and the away from the racquetball hotel as well, and it was uh, fun. It was amazing and fun to watch you sing. So. Uh, Thanks. And you can do a lot of different uh, types of music as well. Hey, hey, Ellie, Ellie, I'm sorry. I'm going to interrupt here. So I just got a text and I'm not allowed to say who it came from. And this was the text. And we are going to wrap it up because I know, Rhonda, you even asked me, you were like, how long is it going to be tonight? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know, you know, maybe 30 minutes, you know, here we are, 90 <laughs> minutes later, but I knew that was going to happen. So I'm not going to say who the text came from, but there it is. <laughs> no, I'm not showing you. I'm just showing you that there's, there's a real text. Okay. I believe you. It says, ask her about one of her first earlier amateur doubles matches at national doubles that she played with her dad. What do you remember about it and who they played? Well, there was a lot of those. Um, my first, my first national doubles tournament. The individual who texts did not say, it, I'm, I'm reading it verbatim. About, male or female? It's a male. Okay. And by the way, while you're thinking about that, Veronica texts me from downstairs and says, <laughs> when you sing, she gets a little intimidated and scared. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to go with... Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to go with the first national doubles I ever played. So I don't know if I'm getting this answer right or not, but the very first national doubles I played, um, Pops and I played against uh, Tim Hansen and Kim Russell, and I was <laughs> scared to death. There we go. I I had never, I'd never been on the court with somebody who hit the ball that hard or fast, and I was crying in the corner the entire first game that we lost 15-0. I think I hit one ball. I was so afraid. I'm like, I think I, I think I actually started crying to my dad in between games and he's like, what's wrong? I'm like, if he hits me, the ball's going to go through me. Cause I mean, you remember, I was like, you know, this big around as a kid. Mm -hmm. So um, he, and, and Kim did her, you know, her high Z serve that is almost good. unreturnable. Right. Good one. And, good and, one. and, and, and after the first game, Tim came over and he saw my dad trying to console me and he's like, don't worry, I'm not going to hit you. And, and okay. I felt better. And then the, the very next thing he did was he told me how to cut off Kim's serve and return it. And so as soon as she did that, that very, that very next first point of the second game, uh, I, I did what he told me to do. And she gave him the death stare the rest of that game. Of course they still beat us, but that was, that was my first national doubles. And that was, uh, <laughs> I was scared, scared out of my mind for most of it. <laughs> That's super cool that you remember that, you know, and Tim Hansen and obviously Tim's watching, you know, one of the greats of all time, you know, yeah. certainly on the right side in doubles and just, just tremendous individual in racquetball and, uh, and his son's getting involved too. So. That's I was just gonna say on on that note, I, my my last uh, last last U.S. Open, I played the sponsor doubles with Timmy. Yeah. Oh, there well, you go. Well, that that yeah. kid's got a, that kid's got a ton of potential, Riz Dog, yeah. and I'm like, he just now needs to take it to the next level. But it's got to be it's got. We'll we'll Tim text us. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> Ellie Ellie's got two more questions, and then two I'm left. gonna wrap it up. Two left. Right. Yeah. All right. If you were to play one last match on the show court at the U.S. Open, who would you want that opponent to be? currently playing or anytime you know it's it's your it's your last match you know you you feel you know well, you I, might not know when my, that's going to be but there will be a last one on that court Rhonda, in terms of your professional racquetball life it'll happen someday so who is that last one Paola. Paola. okay good uh and the last question i have for you it's outside of racquetball you know where's the one place in the world that you have not visited yet that you must you must visit australia Ecuador. I have not been to Ecuador. 
but yeah, I'll, actually, Australia is my my gut reflex answer. Yeah, it's a good one. It's high up there for myself as well. Well, you know, you did a great job answering all of my questions tonight, and there's so many more I could come with. You know, we could talk we, for for hours. We could. We could. We could. We could. We, between the three of us, there's there's there's, all, there's so much Dragon Ball history that we that we have all been there for. <laughs> so, Rhonda, before. before um, I wrap it up with my final question. Thank you, Jen. This comes from Jen. Just real quick, tell us, uh, you know, what the MRF means to you, and you know how. Oh, you got to, you got to poke me in my heart parts for the last question. Um, it's it it's huge again as as an army brat and you know. Tell, tell us what the MRF is first of all. MRF is the Military Racquetball Federation. Uh, Stephen Stephen Harper. Uh, Terry Rogers, uh, Jack, they, they, they spearhead that and, and they do a lot of outreach to help um, wounded warriors and, and soldiers and, um, you know, people who have, who have been through some things uh, learn to um, embrace racquetball as part of their healing process, whether it's a physical or, or mental or emotional um, hurdles that they're, that they're getting over. And it's 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 bringing racquetball to a new audience, and it's bringing racquetball in as um, al almost as a therapy, in that regard. And and you know I've I've seen the things that that it can do. Um, I've seen I've seen the ways that it, it has helped the people that that I have been able to um, have the honor of of being on the court with, who have been been through those things. And some of them have prosthesis, some of them are in wheelchairs, some of them are, you know, just we can't even use an actual racquetball. We've got to use a Nerf ball because the sound can trigger some, some things. So um, it's, it's, it's a very personal thing for me. Uh, my father was in the, in the Gulf war. He was gone for over a year when I was in sixth grade. And when you're, when you're at that age where you're old enough to understand what's going on, but young enough to still be kind of scared. Like what if my dad doesn't come home and thinking of all the families that, that do have to go through that. And then, the, you know, grateful for the ones that do get to come home, but they're not the same way they were when they left. You know, these are all things that, that, you know, a lot of, a lot of military families go through and, and racquetball as kind of an outlet as a, as a rehab, as a, you know, something new to, to aspire to in, in, in a healing process. I think that that's just an incredible, an incredible organization with an incredible mission and, and an incredible, um, cast of people that, that, that are a part of making that happen and, and continuing it on and, um, you know, allowing these, these soldiers to have something to look forward to in that regard. Yeah, Rhonda, it's, it's you know, well said right there. I, Stephen Parper, he does an amazing job. And uh, my cousin, I don't think either one of you know this, but he lost a leg also, you know, over there in the Gulf and, and Stephen Harper hooked him up and he was playing with that Nerf ball for the triggering and, and whatnot. But yeah, it's a, an amazing organization and, and you would be an amazing spokesperson for it. So uh, that's cool that you do that. So I'm, we're, we're going to get out of here now. But before I go, you know, and this one definitely is something that for the three of us, it, it could be emotional and the three of us all could be emotional. But I'm going to, Rhonda, you're just going to answer this tonight because it's about you. So I just want to know this and then I'm going to let you go. You know, tell me what racquetball has given you in life and what it means to you. And, um, you know, just racquetball and Rhonda. That is an emotional question, sons. Uh, it's, it's given me, it's given me a lifetime of memories. Um, it's given me lifetime lessons of I view all all sports as you know or, you know things things that that our, our our type of competition can evoke as as a as a mirror for life as an analogy for life. So I mean any any part of the person that I that I am today or that I will become tomorrow is directly correlated to my experience as an athlete. Um, it's given me friendships that have you guys exactly have lasted a lifetime and and always will. And it's given me plenty of scars and broken bones to remember all those times with uh, that I love. It's given me um, it's given me a camaraderie 
and a, and a, a family worldwide of friends. And I mean, I think you guys can relate to this too, but I mean, how often does it happen? Like every, you could sit next to a stranger on a plane and when you say you're a racquetball player, everybody's got that racquetball story. Even if they never played a tournament, even if they don't know that there's professional racquetball, everybody, oh, I used to play with my uncle when I was a kid or, oh, I played on my college team or something, you know, whatever it is. Like everybody has, has that racquetball story, which is why it's surprising and sad at the same time that the sport itself isn't bigger uh, competitively, like as we know it, but, um, but there's, there's this whole kind of, you know, family, right? Racquetball is almost like that thing where when you realize you have that in common with someone, even if you've never met them before, there's this, there's this kinship, like there's this instant connection of, you know, there's a high likelihood if you've ever been in a club for more than five minutes where there's racquetball courts, you know, somebody that they know type of thing. Um, and, and there's a, there's, there's, I think that there's a bond that we all, we all have at, at, at any level, um, just because we, we, we share that racket in that court space at some point. Um, and it has given me the opportunity to meet people who have stayed in my life at, uh, at the highest level and at the closest level. I mean, I, I, I doubt I would have met Jen without racquetball, met her through a racquetball tournament. So, um, it, it's, I really can't think of any aspect of my life that hasn't been touched by racquetball and or basketball in some way. Yeah, you know, everything you just said, we can definitely echo and, and, and say it how we want. And, and, you know, for me, it's definitely the thing that jumps out the most is the friendships and the relationships and, you know, the closest people in my life, whether I see them, you know, I haven't seen Ellie in years and it's, it's literally physically face to face, but, you know, he's still one of my best friends in the world. And, and, you know, Rhonda, Riz, we, we don't have to see each other. And it's like, we don't miss a beat. And of course, you know, Veronica being the most important person in my life comes from racquetball. And, and yeah, there's a debt of gratitude we all owe to the sport. And, and it's great that we can be here tonight and do this together. And hopefully we'll do it for another, you know, 30, 40, 50 years. And uh, at least know, Rhonda, with that said, I'm going to let you go. Ellie and I kind of stick around and just kind of close it out. And uh, we love you. We're so, thank you so much for being here. You know, you are absolutely one of the greatest of all time in our sport. You are a goat on the Rushmore. And, um, you know, we, we appreciate that. So whatever happens, we'll see you soon. We'll be texting you soon. And uh, thank you, Ellie. I don't know if you want to say anything else. Yeah, you know, I, I've, been tell I've been getting your address like two or three different times, like that, because I have some I'm going to send you and you're going to love it. And I have it still. And it's now made it to my car. <laughs> It's in my car. <laughs> the next stop is the actual shipping spot. Text it to me right it, now. Rhonda. I'll say this, Rhonda. It needs a long tube to get to you. So hopefully <laughs> that's a little little clue and uh, and uh, you'll dig it for sure. And when we do, All you'll right. have to take a picture of it and tag me on Facebook or whatever. And so I know you got it you and got all it. that. But uh, Text me your address right now, Rhonda. I promise it's coming. I promise. But well done tonight. Okay. You know, it's great talking to you. It's great catching up. And uh I know I'll see you again here in in uh, soon enough, soon enough, short time. For sure. Thank, thank you guys. Love you both. Been watching both of you since before I was allowed to play tournaments. So thank you guys for the inspiration that you gave me to be here at this point now today. You guys are awesome and love you and, and love everything you guys are doing for the sport. Love that I can definitely feel I can call you my brothers. Thanks. That's you for too, sure. Rhonda. Same to we'll you. We'll see you soon. Tell mom hi. Hi, mom. Mom, the whole, the whole crew says hi. <laughs> Mom says hi. <laughs> there you go. Later, Rick. Thanks. Thanks, Scotty Mac. So Ellie, that's uh, you know, that was, you know, that that end part, man. Asking yeah. asking somebody like Rhonda, you know, what has racquetball given her or what does it mean? Is it's just like asking you or myself or you know, a, a bunch of other people. And you know, hearing her say that is is it does, it touches, you know, it's very touching and it's emotional, you know, and who knows how long we're going to be doing it. You know, here we are with Rhonda and, you know, none of us want to say, but there, yeah, there's a point, you know, you asked it. There's going to be a point where she plays her last match or like you played your last match. You know, did you know when your last match was going to be, no. you know, at the competitive level? No, no, I didn't. And I certainly didn't on that court at there. And, and for what for me was Memphis. Uh, so yeah, you know, there is, there is that moment, but She's hungry still. That's what I take from this conversation. She's hungry. She's she's confident in that this time has allowed her to uh, recover some things that have been probably not lost, but floating around there in terms of, uh, you know, hey, she's in her 40s or near her 40s. So there's going to be injuries that pop up. And 
we talked a little bit about that. We, we stayed on that at the beginning of the call here and, and it was interesting to hear about, but she's still hungry. And so I'm really excited to see when, when COVID, COVID lets us get back to indoor racquetball and a full time. And we've forgotten about it a little bit and we're back to seeing racquetball being played and watching tournaments on the LPRT's network. Then I'm really interested to see how she comes out of the gate and how she does, because she got a lot of young talent there facing her now, as she knows. And as we all know, so, um, you know, Hey, she can still, can she win another pro stop? I mean, that would be amazing to see her win another pro stop. Uh, she's won 28 LPRT wins being in 82 finals. So that's a lot of finals, right? She's played some of the great players and lost some finals over the years, but she's won 28 of them and been number one, four you, where, times ranked four, one, well, number one, the four you, seasons. Where do you put Rhonda in the greatest of all time women's racquetball players? Yeah, I have her in my top four. I have her in my top four. You know, there's, you know, in terms of players who are ahead of her in number of IR, of, excuse me, of LPRT or pro, women's professional tour wins. Uh, there's, you know, there's four other ladies ahead of her, I believe, maybe five other ladies ahead of her. She might be six on that, but um, you know, I, I think she's in the top four actually with, with that, uh, you know, uh, you know, we got Paola who's obviously starting to make her self give, give herself just another uh, atmosphere in terms of being the greatest of all time, but Michelle Gould, Lynn Adams, Cheryl Godinas, Rhonda Rasich, Christy Van Hees, Christy Huzak now for limited time, but she's involved. Heather McKay going way back. A couple others that are in there. Jackie Parizo deserves mentioning and others that were close to that level or close to that ballpark, uh, Robin Levine you, and a couple others. So, Have you ever seen a better all around athlete that has played professional women's racquetball? That's a great question. Um, you know, I think, I think Powell has given her a run for her money right now, but you know, I don't think Powell is guarding anybody in uh, you know, a college level basketball game 20 years ago and, and still having designs on playing a, a totally different non racket sport like basketball um, like Rhonda, Rhonda is, which was an amazing comment on her part too, that she has the desire to play in the WNBA at this. Awesome. Wow. Well, if she can accomplish that, then that is a huge story, but you know, Paolo has probably given her a run for money on that. Someone like Samantha Solis, Lynn Adams, I would say was in that, in that ballpark, but the, the, the short answer is no, not really. I mean, she is, she is a great athlete and she sacrifices her body and you can see that she could play other sports. When you watch her play racquetball, you can see the athleticism in her. And sometimes, you know, so I'll be really honest over the years, sometimes when she's not playing her best and I've actually watched it, I'm just, I'm a little shocked at times because she has so much great athletic athleticism in her that, um, you know, I just, I feel like, God, I want to see that come out right now. It needs to come out because she's a, you know, she, maybe she's a little, she's a little lower on her level than at this particular moment. And I've seen her playing internationally quite a bit. So, um, you know, you always kind of say, Hey, she can turn it on at any time here because she's that great of an athlete, you know, and your question about the MR, uh, the military racquetball federation was, Great timing for that and a great answer on her part, part, I thought. It's really interesting stuff. Yeah, it's 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 meaningful. You know, it's it's super important. And, you know, I'm glad we got that. And Jen, thank you for that, because Jen actually posted that on the comments as well. But, you know, we do have to wrap it up. And Ellie, I'm with you, you know, and, and we say it a lot. I, I just don't care about the age, you know. Maybe it's something personal for me right now that I feel. You know, maybe it's mm -hmm. just something that, I feel confident and strong. And when I look at Rhonda, I know she feels great and she feels strong and, you know, she's been around doing it forever. And, and like my wife always says, and, and I'm kind of the same way. I just wouldn't bet against her. You know, yeah. I think she has the ability to go still win tournaments. It's up to her, you know, if she can stay healthy and uh, if nothing else, she's, she's a blast to watch. So, you know, it'll be fun to see her. And, and for all those, those young girls out there, or really anybody that want to learn, you know, I'd be banging her door down too. You know, if you really want to be the best you can be, she mentioned a great junior, you know, earlier in the show and God, if that, if she mentioned my daughter like that, I'd be texting Rhonda. Yeah, right now. yeah absolutely. I think you're right there. I think these girls should at, at worst get in, get in her world for a couple of days of practice. Even just if you're only there for two or three days, just go be around her and ask her to practice and stay on her until she commits to it. And, and uh, play, play some play some ball with her and talk after and talk about it. Maybe get some video for yourself. Not 
you know, there's so much growing that you can do from talking to veteran players that have been around for 20 plus years and are still hungry themselves. So I agree with you hundred percent. And still winning and still, and still winning, you know, you know and, and something like, yeah. And she's still winning. Exactly. She's still the highest ranked pro from the United States, I believe there. So, um, you know, there, you know, there's probably something there for her in the future in terms of creating a little racquetball Academy for up and coming young women. I think she would be uh, an ideal location in Arizona or wherever she's at. And especially Arizona with the, so, you know, maybe that's something she'll do later on, but clearly right now she's not in that position because she's competitive and not in her mind, she wants to win matches. So that's, uh, you know, they're going to have to seek her out uh, to get some of that knowledge and to get that practice out of her. So we'll see if any of them do that. Yeah. That's, that's the thing I always question, you know, ask yourself, look in the mirror, be accountable, be responsible, be responsible and accountable for your own decisions. You know, you want to be better. You want to win a gold medal. You want to have U S open titles. What are you doing different? What did you do different today than you did yesterday? Okay. That's what made me better. That's what made John better. That's what made Rhonda better. We just weren't satisfied. We wanted to improve. And, you know, it's easy to say, I want to be better and I want to do this. You know what? That's just not the answer. There's more to it. So seek that out and really ask yourself, are you doing everything in your power to truly be the best you can be. And in today's society and what's going on, not only on the court, but off the court, okay? Take a look in the mirror. Are you doing the right thing? Or maybe you're not. Maybe you're just kind of going with the flow and you're happy and content with your results. And that's fine too, because obviously if there was a hundred Rondas, what good would Ronda be, right? In this case. So anyway, you know, Ellie and I and Scotty Mack, we're gonna close it out for tonight. We will be back next Sunday. And as always, this is Ellie's Touch. We will not tell you the guests or guest. We don't know yet. Yep. Truth is, well, the truth is we really work it out over the next week. So, yeah. you know, Ellie and I come up with somebody and Scotty Mack and we, we decide what's going on and what's hot. Obviously, there's some good things happening. We're super excited about that. We're getting back on the court. We know you are getting back on the court. Ellie and I would love to hear from you and Scotty Mack. You know, anybody that wants to be a sponsor or part of the show, contact us. We don't mind. We can throw up a commercial. Ellie, can't we do like a little voice clip or a voiceover of somebody's company or, you know, some. Yeah, the, op the opportunities are endless right now for us. We're, we're consistent and we want to be doing this for quite a while. We're enjoying it. There's so many people in our sport that we can talk to and have great discussions. That was our 10th show. We just, uh, we're about to wrap up here. And Rhonda was the perfect guest for our 10th show. You know, we don't always know until a Thursday, Friday, who it's going to be, but that process is, you know, feels itself out. And we, you know, we're going with the times a little, we're going with the interesting stories. We're going with people we want to talk to as well. And we're going, we're trying to create questions that we know you want to hear out there as the audience. So, uh, you know, Hey, we'll take recommendations, but, uh, we're going to make the decision and Scotty Mack, uh, as, a, as the week comes to an end and, uh, you know, we're enjoying the people we're talking to so far. This has been great. Yeah. We, we love spending our Sunday nights with you. We hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much for being here beyond the court with Ellie, myself, and Scotty Mack. And yeah, we would love to see some suggestions. Bring them, send them. You know how to follow us. You know how to get a hold of us. We will see you next Sunday night. Have an amazing week. We'll see you soon. Thank you so much. And don't forget to download the app. It's all inclusive. Everything's there. It's not just about Sudsy Munchak racquetball. It's everything racquetball. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Have a great week.